luxury, aspirational product. And the example would be in the automotive space, Lexus. And the way Lexus works at tier three, that consumers want to engage with, they produce content that literally is done by their tier one agency, team one, and they syndicate it out to all of their dealers, five Facebook posts a week, high end, high resolution photos, videos, with really captivating statements, phraseology, and links, you're not going to get engagement more than two to 5% of that fan base. The task organization here in the back of the room that was called out yesterday has over 45,000 fans. So when they hit 5% of their organic base, it's almost like an OEM. So they still get that relevancy. But if you only have 300 to 500, there's a difference there. Now, hey, we're serving ads in Facebook based on users' profile preferences. And those preferences change continuously. Every time you like something, every time you share something, every time you comment on something that somebody else may have engaged with, every time you engage with a new brand, you're continuously changing your specific aspects in that algorithm. Now here's the difference. If you think with Google, it's a specific vertical, you're playing in automotive, you may be focused on a Ford or a Chevy, in Facebook, you're competing in that exact same newsfeed. And I don't know about you, phones have gotten wide, but they haven't gotten wide enough that Facebook's gonna create two news feeds so that we can really serve a lot of ads. So the competition is gonna get aggressive. So don't fail, like some of us may have done with Google the first time around and not by our name, get involved in this game. And I'm gonna give you a number of reasons too as we get here, supply and demand. Advertisers bid to get on page one, and on Facebook, advertisers are competing to get in the news feed. And that competition is getting more aggressive every day, because that real estate is starting to disappear. So, if you think about it this way, page one should equal the news feed. And if you keep that comparison in the back of your mind, as marketers trying to get in front of your consumers, that's the idea. So, you're gonna see this slide a lot during this presentation. Does that section make sense? Yes? Yes. Understanding that make money? Yes. Okay. Let's jump in and knowing where your money lives. So where does your money live? And how do we most cost effectively, effectively reach our most profitable customers? The first step in this is understand that even though we're doing digital marketing and that we're seriously focused online, every single consumer goes home to a physical address. So take a second, step back and think about that. We are working in a digital world, but they go home somewhere. And that's where we get into our next piece. Because you can't fall for a sales pitch. ROI has to begin before the first campaign is set. So work has to be done before anything else can go. So if your agency tells you that in an hour they can launch your campaign, and there is an agency that is not true today that literally was guaranteeing clicks on Facebook ads, thousand bucks, we'll give you 500 clicks. Well, they give you your clicks and then they turn your Facebook ad off and they keep the rest of the money. Well, that's not doing anything for you because what happened the rest of the month? What did those clicks do? And was that ad anywhere in your vicinity of your business model? You didn't know because they didn't do any of the work to generate what you needed. So, let's start with the most easy to describe answer. Radius marketing is dead, especially for this dealer here in Broward County, Florida, because radius marketing puts you in the ocean. Now, what you're looking at is a map of this dealer's market area, and it's broken down based on zip codes. 70% of this dealer's active customers are only in 22 zip codes. Their average cost per sale is $200. And I'm going to show you, this is the way you start to break down your exact customers from your DMS to understand where your most profitable customers live. So we're going to take an example of two specific zip codes. This one is 15 miles from where the dealership is. This zip code ranks number four in sales, and it ranks number five in service. It has a 29 to one ROI, and our, our cost app calculation here costs us 99 bucks to sell a car out of this zip code. So I definitely want to advertise this zip code, and I want to advertise a ton. 
That zip code is in that green map. Now this zip code is not in the green map. This zip code is ranked 10.7 miles from yours. So this is closer to my store. So you'd think, wow, that's close to my dealership. I want to definitely touch that. But this zip code, 22 in my sales rank, 25 in my service rank, five to one on my ROI. And every time I sell a car from this zip code, it cost me $434 to do it. Well, that's, that's kind of crappy, right? But I wouldn't know that if I didn't start breaking down all the data and my historic trends over at least a three year period so I can see where I want to place my ads. And I can't do that unless I start diving into my data. So now when I look at these two specific zip codes, and these are only two of the, of the 53 that this dealer has responsibility for or has sold vehicles into, I can finally figure out where my most profitable zip codes are for my business and then I can figure out quote unquote, where my money lives and where I need to place my marketing dollars to be most efficient. Why am I going to 